All right, guys, so what's up? It's part two of a great video series here we're doing with the man, Mark Parker. Mark, what's up, brother? What's going on? All right, so the last video we did, we were talking to you guys about gas versus battery chainsaws, some uh, cutting techniques, and just a, a really good breakdown about chainsaws if you guys are just getting into them and using them and how to use them safely, right? So on this video, Mark's gonna be showing uh, you guys proper ways to maintain, break down, repair, mm -hmm. fix all of your chainsaw equipment. So let's do this. Uh, really quick, if they didn't see the first video, uh, just plug your stats so everybody knows who you are again. I'm Mark Parker, technical field specialist with Bryan Equipment Sales. We're the distributor of steel product across five and a half states. Absolutely. I train people on how to use chainsaws, uh, fix chainsaws, how to safely operate uh, all of our equipment. Um, and it's a fun job and I enjoy doing it. <laughs> and you've been in the industry for like 15 plus years. Yeah. So you had a lot of landscape company. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Equipment is uh, the distributor for steel around here. Absolutely. Big shout out to those guys because you've come to our live event. Mm -hmm. You've come uh, on our podcast, shared your knowledge, and we really appreciate Brian. We really appreciate you yep. um, being Thanks. in the industry and helping our community grow. So, all right, so we'll take it away, dude. Let's talk about chainsaws. What do we got here? What saw uh, is this? So this is the MX462CM. Right. So when you're shopping for chainsaws and you see something that says CM or TCM or what are all these CBEQ, what XYZ, yeah. you're probably wondering what do all these things mean? Yeah. So when there's a T in a chainsaw, that means it's a top handle. Okay. So this is like a 201 T. Yeah. Now that C and like with this where it's the 462 C. Okay. That means uh, that's gonna be uh, a comfort or easy. Um, that's where the C's coming in. With okay. comfort, it's got an better anti-vibration, more comfort features. And then the M would stand for M-Tronic. That's an electronically controlled carburetor. Oh, wow. So that carburetor will actually tune itself to how you are running, atmospheric pressure, temperature, uh, all sorts of different variable. Every variable you can think of, of while you're cutting yeah. uh, wood, that carburetor is going to tune itself so it's running at optimum position at all times. The uh, steel B, uh, BR800 C. Yes. Right? So the C is that, that's the comfort. Really, yeah, it's the comfort. Yep. See, I'm picking it up. Uh-huh. All right, man. All right, so what are we going to be showing? We got uh, the bar. Let's go through the like the, the yep. common uh, names and parts. So, so one thing, people will mistakenly call this the blade. Okay. Or they'll walk into a dealership and be like, I've got a 16 inch or an 18 inch or a 20 inch. Okay. You don't have a 16, 18, or 20 inch. That's the size bar you have, but what saw you have will be, you'll know from that little cap right there. Okay, so start with that. Yeah, so this is a 462. <laughs> so you've got your bar right here, and okay. then you have your chain right here. All right. And then, so right here, we call these bar nuts. Um, this is what holds this guard right here on to the chainsaw. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys a uh, way to uh, tighten and untighten the bar and chain. Um, What's the little tool you're using, by the way? So this is called a scrunch. Scrunch. Why is it called a scrunch? It's a screw and a wrench. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> they, really, the, they the really most, thought about that. This is the most technical video <laughs> that'll ever be out there. Yeah. Brad Equipment's like, don't use our name now, right? Right. Like, so, it's like a spork, but different. Exactly. <laughs> but better because you get to fix stuff and, with it. And you know somebody's getting paid residuals on this and royalties. <laughs> Absolutely. Some, some, some guy's a millionaire because of this. So, <laughs> with this saw, when when you are putting your bar or uh, in your chain right onto the saw, okay. you want to pick up on the tip of the bar. The reason you want to do this is because this emulates setting the bar onto wood. And then as you tighten, you'll see the chain come up right here. So the sagging is going away. You see how the slack's coming out? Yep. And then I just tighten it up until it just touches the bottom of the bar. And then I'm, I let it go. And then I tighten the bar nuts down. You can see how I'm tightening them. Okay. I'm not using a big breaker bar or anything. I'm just snugging them up with my hand. So use the screw for the uh, the flathead? Correct. Okay, so that was the first part. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and one nice thing is these bar nuts are captured. So when, and I mentioned that and Brian was like, captured? What's capture mean? Yeah. So captured, what they means is they do not fall off okay. when you have them. So I will show you real quick with this. All right, so we got the, the nuts, okay. They don't fall out, you see that? Oh. See how they don't fall out? Yeah, so if you're in the woods, man, you don't want that falling. Correct. Okay. Now, on this 250, they're not captured. 
So, sorry about the sun, by the way, guys. We got a perfect day out here in Michigan. No, not enough clouds. There's literally zero clouds in the sky. It couldn't get any better out here. We're out here doing videos. We're out here talking, shop. We're having fun. You guys saw how I didn't have to really move the bar too hard or anything like that yep. when I was uh, taking this off or anything of the sort. I was able to just easily take it off. So you see how these are not captured okay. on this 250 right here and how you can see how you could lose these bar knots. Absolutely. So that's an important factor right there is you don't even need to keep track of these. Now is that like on like the pro units or how Correct. does that work? On the professional units, the they will have captured bar knots. Okay, gotcha. Um, on the non-professional units, they won't. And also this is an older chainsaw. So um, so what are we looking at now? Now it's all exposed. Yep, so now, it's all, now that it's all exposed, we can take this off. All right. Just to kind of show you guys a little bit of maintenance. By the way, if you guys are appreciating this, like big thumbs up, we're doing this. Uh, this actually marks like kind of like day off, if you will. He normally doesn't work on uh, Labor Day weekend like this. And uh, so if you guys appreciate that, big thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Let, so Let Mark know you appreciate him in the comments. So thank you. So we got the bar. Yep, <clears throat> bar and chain. Bar and chain, yep. So right here, we'll have our sprocket. And then also you can, this is where, this is how our, uh, chain break works you see how i'm able to spin this right here yep and then i can't spin it anymore oh. that's because there's a band that goes right around it and it seals it up okay so it's it's not able to move that way but i always keep a a brush of some sort in my safety bag brian was wondering if this was for beard oil or what this was for <laughs> um this no. video is now sponsored by manscaped correct <laughs> so i uh was that your best Caleb Allman voice? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I keep that so I can clean that off. I wanna keep those areas clean as much as possible when I'm looking at the chainsaw. Oh, like right on time, bro. <clears throat> How's it going? Now we have the shroud here. That we wanna take off. And you just want to investigate, you want to look into all the internals of a chainsaw right here. You want to make sure there's not a bunch of debris build up inside of here. This is, this is awesome. I don't think I've ever seen the inside of a chainsaw. Let me bring it over here into the sun a little bit. So in layman's term, gas uh, chainsaw for the pro, mm -hmm. um, would, they, would they be messing with this on a day-to-day -day basis, a yearly basis, or is this just more for main, uh, maintenance and guys doing repairs? So this would be... I guess if you're gonna take that shroud off, it's just to look and make sure you're cleaning it off like I am. There's no reason to mess with the M-Tronic system. Yep. There's really no, you don't really if you need to get the data off of it unless you're going in for maintenance or repairs okay. or something of that sort. Uh, um, annual cleaning, monthly cleaning, what do you do? I, I try to clean a saw after every use. Oh wow, um, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you always wanna check your, your your fuel make sure it looks good inside the tank make sure it's not like a dirty brown color um i don't know if you're able to tell that but that's the nice um greenish color that you get when you're using uh rec ethanol free fuel and our hp ultra oil okay. um that's what we recommend you run in any of your small uh two cycle equipment okay and then also you you, so you want to make sure you have enough fuel and then also you want to make sure you have enough bar oil um all right and there's enough bar oil in there so always keep that reservoir full absolutely can you overfill that well yeah if you overfill it then it just comes out of the saw and then you got a bunch of bar oil there everywhere. you go we've all done that so. absolutely i do it all the time yep. you want to make sure your starter rope is in good working condition um, and make sure there's no tears or frays or anything like that. Yep. One nice part when we're talking about that comfort feature of the saw, you can see. So this is the elasto start. So when you pull, see how there's a little bit of give oh, right yeah. in there? Yep. What, what, uh, what is this uh, other parts that are related to it? What do you got here? So I have a couple of parts that I keep in my uh, tool bag for when I'm cutting out in the field. Obviously I said keep a brush. Right. Um, I keep a Sharpie okay. um, because then when I need to uh, sharpen my chain, I'm able to mark the dullest head. Okay. This is a stump vise. So you just take your ax and pound this into a stump then you're able to clamp the saw into it like so. Okay. And then I use my two-in-one file to sharpen the saw. All right. Uh, these two-in-one files are excellent. Um, 
I they're about 35 bucks and they're a great investment because what this two and five two and one file does is it sharpens your cutting head as well as uh sharpens the raker that you have uh right here okay so it's sharpening the inside of that cutting head and then it's also sharpening that leading raker right there at the same time uh grinding that down so then you're getting a true cut every uh true sharpen every time that's what we these guards are here for when you want to sharpen look at your wood chips are you making wood chips or are you starting to make dust okay if you're starting to make dust stop and sharpen the chain okay uh because that will because the more you cut with a dull chain the more you'll have to sharpen to get it back to sharp okay makes sense how often do you uh replace a chain maybe every so year or two? replacing a chain it's that's a very relative question because okay. it's first often as you uh screw up the chain but okay what people won't notice is i don't know if you'll be able to see in the light or not but there's actually a line about where the tip of my sharpie is okay back here all the way here let me see oh i do on the little tip yep yeah. right here that's how far back you can go with a chain oh wow yeah okay a lot of people throw the chains away long before that but that's about how far back you can go wow well, okay so that's relative then like you said correct so there's but no, it, like but if i break off some cutting heads or if I run the chain uh, and it hits concrete and stuff like that and it gets really banged up or it gets bent, Sure, you throw it away. If it gets stretched out, if it breaks, yep. throw hit, it away. Hit a, hit a piece of wire or burlap or something tangles. Correct. Like something stupid. Correct. Okay. So, and you see how I showed you, you gotta have a scrunch and you gotta get the cover off and all that. The beauty of these quick chain adjusters right here is that it's all right here. Oh yeah. That just loosens up right there. And then I'm able to loosen. Yeah, this side. Sorry about this one, guys. I'm able to loosen up. And then I'm able to tighten up with no tools. Notice I'm still picking up on the bar. Yep. And I just tighten that up. What's the the rule of thumb? I've always heard like a, like a quick little snap, right? Is that? So you, some people say that, some people will say other things. My rule of thumb and what we kind of teach is you just snug it up to the bottom of the bar that's okay. a good that you just you don't have to over tighten it but right when it touches the bottom of the bar so i'm picking up and then see how it just touched up yep and then all right good enough for me okay so just a little bit of tension yep but you don't want to over tighten it either correct okay you don't want to over tighten or anything like that all right well where can these guys find you if they want some more info if they want to follow up on you and uh, also you do offer like training services absolutely a little bit more in like north northeast midwest here yes correct so i cover michigan ohio and indiana so if you're in that area you can get a hold of me uh google mark parker steel um and i'll come right up and then also you can find me on instagram at mark parker 567 i love it dude all right guys well hey if you guys enjoyed this video uh like mark was saying shoot a big thumbs up and uh say a little comment down below thanks mark or uh let us know if there's some different things here that you didn't know before um when mark was coming up here i said hey can we do like a, an equipment breakdown because i want to learn about chasing saws i want to be safe out there and uh by the way big shout out to brian equipment for letting mark and uh allowing mark to come on up here and uh taking your weekend by the way mm -hmm. it's labor day weekend we're doing this video so all right guys well this is actually video two in a three-part video series so if you didn't watch the other one we'll leave a little uh card here and an end screen you can go back and watch the first video but then stay tuned in the next couple days we'll be launching uh the third part video series where we're actually going to be showing some of the handheld chainsaw tools from Milwaukee, uh, Craftsman, and from Steel, which is pretty cool. So, hey, Mark, thanks again, brother. Thank you, buddy. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.